Yeah, that's King King Crab. Ow. Ow. I hate it when they do that. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best animated movie cameos. Wait, you're not Bobby. <laughs> Name's Danny, bro. For this list, we're looking at the most well-known characters and real-life figures that appear ever so briefly in animated flicks. Some of these cameos take place at the end of the film, so beware of spoilers. What cartoon cameos caught your attention? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Totoro, Toy Story 3 as we follow the adventures of Woody and Buzz Lightyear across the Toy Story franchise, we get to see a wide variety of classic toys on screen. Hey, yes. Draw. <laughs> oh! Got me again, Etch. You've been working on that draw. From Barbie to Etch-a-Sketch, there's bound to be a toy you're familiar with somewhere. One of the more unusual cameos is the appearance of a Totoro plushie in the third installment. This magical forest spirit is from the Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro! Totoro, May's lost somewhere. I looked and looked, but I can't find her anywhere. Oh, please, you have to help me find her. It's a hugely popular character in Japan, and its cameo in a Pixar flick might be because of a fun family connection. Turns out the art director of Toy Story 3 is married to the niece of Hayao Miyazaki, the writer and director of the iconic Japanese animated film. It's right around the corner! Yay! <laughs> Good God, let's look at Number 19. Randy Marsh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers since this film is based on a well-loved animated TV series, it's full of nostalgic cartoon cameos. While racing through a convention, Chip and Dale hide at the feet of the still-feuding He-Man and Skeletor. Hey, there's something down there. There's nothing down there, you boob. You walk around with no pants long enough and you start to notice every breeze. If you stick through the film's credits, Darkwing Duck shows up to make a pitch for his own live-action film. We want Darkwing! We want Darkwing! Say it with me! We want Darkwing! What a load of malarkey! But perhaps the most surprising cameo is the inclusion of Randy Marsh from South Park. While investigating a bathhouse, the chipmunks catch a glimpse of Stan's dad. I get the kids on the weekends, but it's not the same. Considering Randy's hot tub experience on his own show, we're glad he stuck to the sauna for this surprise appearance. Number 18. Sebastian, Aladdin. Part of the fun of watching Disney is finding the cameos made by characters from their other films. Genie of the Lamp! Right here, direct from the lamp, right here for your very much wish fulfillment. Thank you! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Since The Little Mermaid rejuvenated the Disney Animation Studio, it's no wonder that a character from that movie would pop up in its next big hit, Aladdin. The genie's fondness for magical impressions and pop culture references makes it easy to bring an ocean character to a desert story. Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? Did you bring me here? And all of a sudden you're walking out on me? I don't think so. When Aladdin asks his magical servant to make him a king, Genie jokingly produces a recipe book. The page for Alaskan King Crab opens the door for a brief visit from Ariel's friend Sebastian, accompanied by a few notes of his signature song. Can you make me a prince? Oh, let's see. Chicken a la king? <laughs> no? Yeah, that's King, king Crab. I hate it when they do that. Number 17, Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. Based on the video game series, this sci-fi comedy follows a misfit duo as they help save planets from destruction. When Clank tries to scan Ratchet to figure out what species he is, a number of possibilities pop up on his screen. Apologies, I have not been able to locate your species in my database. Yeah, I get that a lot. There aren't many of us left. Not in this galaxy, anyway. One of those is the Otzel Daxter from the Jack and Daxter video game series. Both of these franchises are from Sony Entertainment, and the duo has made a number of small cameos in various Ratchet & Clank video games. It was a fun nod to fans to bring Daxter into the film as well. Fascinating. Yeah. I crashed on Velden when I was just a baby. No notes, no message, no name. Huh. Kinda like you. Number 16. Veteran NASCAR Racers. Cars 3. In this third installment of the Cars franchise, Lightning McQueen finds himself becoming obsolete as he faces a new generation of racers. This film was a treat for NASCAR fans because so many of their racing favorites cruised in for a cameo. Oh, I think we're in for a treat today. These racers are... Oh, hey, McQueen! Win one for us old guys! Huh. 
Will do, Jeff. Daryl Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Richard Petty, who made appearances in the previous Cars films, reappear for this final installment. Petty's son Kyle also joined in on the fun. Great win today, Cal. Thank you, Shannon. It was a great win. I was, hey, hey! Uh, Pito! Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, laugh it up. But why stop there? The movie also included cameos from Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace, Daniel Suarez, and Ryan Blaney, who all took on automotive avatars and had their motorized moment. Maybe it's best he doesn't even show up, you know, after how last season ended. McQueen's still not here? Didn't he pull this in his rookie year? At least that's what my grandfather told me. Number 15, Steven Spielberg. We're back, a dinosaur story. Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park ramped up pop culture's obsession with dinosaurs back in the early 90s. Spielberg's own Amblimation Studio hoped to catch a ride on the film's T-Rex tales with this family-friendly time-traveling adventure. Everybody, I'd like you to meet my new friend, Cecilia Nuthatch. The name's Rex. Nice to meet you. A pleasure, Rex. Very nice to meet and you. And I'm Dweeb. Unfortunately, the savage live-action dinos were much more popular than their singing animated counterparts, and the movie flopped at the box office. Although its reception was lackluster, the film did provide a fun cameo. When the dinosaurs make a musical appearance at a parade, the spectators eventually panic. In the crowd, there is a dead ringer for Spielberg himself. What up? We'll meet you at the circus in Central Park! Now run! As he runs for his life, you can see him wearing a hat for Amblimation Studio. Number 14, Sid Phillips, Coco. In Toy Story, Sid Phillips was the toy torturing next door neighbor of Woody's owner, Andy. Yes. I've always wanted to put a spaceman in the orbit. In the third film, a long-haired older Sid is seen working as a garbage collector. We know it's him because of the distinctive skull t-shirt he still wears. That's also how you can recognize him during his supposedly brief appearance in Coco. After traveling to the Land of the Dead, Miguel enters a talent competition to get the attention of the famous Ernesto. The way you keep me guessing, I'm nodding and I'm guessing. I'll count it as a blessing, that I'm only un poco loco. One of his fellow competitors is a skeletal musician wearing that black shirt with the white skull that we know so well. Number 13, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, The Incredibles. Right from the earliest days of Disney Studios, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston were part of the animating team. We were all trying to do something that expressed the inner feelings of the character for that particular thing and how it related to other characters. From Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937 through The Fox and the Hound in 1981, they both contributed to the creation of some of animation's most beloved characters. The two were part of Disney's Nine Old Men, and so their cameo in The Incredibles is an absolute blast. When the Parr family and Frozone defeat Syndrome's Omnidroid, the crowd hails them as heroes. To one side, two older gentlemen, who are the spitting image of the animators, make some on-point comments about the superiority of going old school. See that? Eh, that's the way to do it. That's old school. Yeah? <laughs> Number 12, Scar, Hercules. During his rise to fame, Hercules faced many destructive beasts. One of these beasts was the Nemean Lion. To celebrate his victory, he poses for a painting, wearing the skin of said lion. But if you look closer, that pelt seems awfully familiar, doesn't it? That's right, it's none other than our favorite two-faced feline, Scar from The Lion King. I told you don't move. Remember Zazu's snarky comment about what Mufasa should do with Scar? Looks like after Scar's death, someone at Disney decided to make good use out of his remains. It's a hilarious Easter egg. Plus, it's nice to see that Scar has found a new calling. This stuff doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. You can't give up now, I'm counting on you. Number 11, old aged Harley Quinn, Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker. Based on the animated series Batman Beyond, this film set a new Joker's gang against Bruce Wayne's protege, Terry McGinnis. However, old rivalries return as Bruce suspects that Joker isn't as dead as he'd been led to believe. Can't be. Oh no, your old eyes do not deceive you, Brucey. After all, who know me better than you? Another presumed deceased villain also shows up in a great cameo at the end of the film. 
The Dee Dee twins, members of the Joker's gang who were apprehended, are bailed out of jail by their grandma. Delia and Deidre Dennis, your grandmother has paid your bail and you're being released into her custody pending your trial. Oh, joy. Fans were delighted to see an elderly but still spry Harley Quinn enter their jail cell. Despite what was considered a fatal fall, the still sassy Quinn survived to raise a couple of grandkids. You rotten little scamps! I struggle to make a good home for you and this is the thanks I get! Ow! Break a grandmother's heart! I hope they throw the book at you! Number 10. Rapunzel and Flynn Rider from Tangled, Frozen For the first For the first time in forever, the doors to the castle are opening for Elsa's coronation, and everyone is going to be there, including two unexpected guests. Please don't freak out! If you look closely when Anna's singing her tune, you'll notice the backs of what look like Rapunzel and Flynn Rider from Tangled. It had seemed that after their wedding, the pair traveled all the way from Corona to celebrate Elsa becoming a queen. Nathan Greno, the co-director of Tangled, was caught off guard by their cameo as well, later receiving confirmation from someone behind the scenes that it really was them. Unexpected, sure, but this is hardly the strangest cameo Disney's pulled off involving these films. Best day ever! <laughs> Number 9. Captain Jack Skellington, James and the Giant Peach Jack Skellington has quite the impressive resume. First the Pumpkin King and later a pirate captain? When Mr. Centipede dives down into a sunken shipwreck to find a compass, he comes face to face with the swashbuckling Pumpkin King. Unfortunately for Centipede, Jack isn't giving up his compass without a fight. So he and his undead crew prepare to exterminate the thieving invertebrate. Miss Spider and James come to rescue Centipede, and while Jack puts up a good fight, he is no match for a bug with eight legs. While the scene may have been short, it was still a real treat to see the Pumpkin King in pirate garb. Enough of a treat to inspire Pirate Jack merchandise. <laughs> Number 8. Sigourney Weaver, Finding Dory Hello? I'm Sigourney Weaver. Oh, hi, Sigourney! I, I need your help! Won't you please join us? Any fish that swims into Morro Bay, California, is greeted with the comforting voice of Sigourney Weaver, welcoming them to the Marine Life Institute. To the fish and various aquatic creatures, she's a friendly presence. But to everyone else, she's simply a recording booming throughout the Institute, sometimes at the most unexpected moments. What lies before you represents the third and final part of the Marine Life Mission. In a way, it all fits. Weaver's had experience narrating nature documentaries and has worked with Pixar before in WALL-E. Time for lunch in a cup. But the idea remains an admittedly random one. It originated as a joke idea that the director thought would never make it into the final product, until it did. Dory, there you are! Guys, I found help. Sigourney Weaver's gonna tell us where we are. Look out! Ah! Number seven, Tom Hanks, The Simpsons Movie. Tonsil my hair, Mr. Hanks. Sure thing, son. <laughs> no, we're not talking about Otum Shank this time. We're talking about the genuine article, Tom Hanks. A corrupt environmental agent has plans for Springfield. More specifically, a plan to wipe it off the map. He produces a commercial revealing his plan to blow it up and turn it into a second Grand Canyon. And Tom Hanks himself is the whimsical narrator for the ad. That's where Springfield is! It's nowhere near where anything is or ever was. What makes this particular cameo so hilarious is that given Tom Hanks' reputation as the nicest guy in Hollywood, no one would expect him to go along with something this crooked. <laughs> then again, maybe that's what makes him the perfect fit. You can get away with almost anything if you have the right endorsement. This is Tom Hanks saying if you're going to pick a government to trust, why not this one? Number 6. Meatloaf as Meatloaf. Sausage Party. Sausage Party has some pretty colorful musical moments, but this one really takes the cake. After the dispute over the great beyond forces Frank and Brenda to break up, we cut to a sad, suggestive montage set to the tune of Meatloaf's I'd Do Anything for Love. The kicker is that it actually features Meatloaf as a singing Meatloaf, facial structure and all. I would do anything for love. 
They don't even try to hide that it's him, as they later have him spoofing his Bat Out of Hell album cover. It's a seriously bizarre tribute to a great musician, but hey, Meatloaf is willing to do just about anything for love, so why not do this? But I just won't do that. I do Number 5. All the Nintendo Characters – The Super Mario Bros. Movie after the less-than-stellar live-action film from the 90s, Nintendo waited 30 years to give the silver screen another shot at the Super Mario Bros. The creators of the new film made fans happy by sticking to the original feel of the games. They also included as many Nintendo cameos as possible. Dad, wait back! Enough with the showboating! What do you mean? They like it! If you're checking out the guests at Bowser's wedding, you'll see King Boo and King Babom. A pack of Yoshis can also be seen running through the Mushroom Kingdom, and an egg makes an unexpected return in the credits. Truly devoted fans may have also pinpointed the voice of Charles Martinet. He voiced the original Mario and Luigi in the games, and played their father and a man named Giuseppe in the film. Uh, what about the accents? Is it… is it too much? Too much? It's a perfect! Wahoo! Number 4. Stan Lee – Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse I'm going to miss him. Yeah, we were friends, you know. Can I return it if it doesn't fit? It always fits. Eventually. A Marvel movie, even an animated one, is incomplete without a Stan Lee appearance. Just look at his reveal as Fred's superhero father in Big Hero 6. Son. Dad. Stan Lee once again lent his voice to a cartoon depiction in 2018's Into the Spider-Verse, and pops up several times. It's hard to miss Miles getting a pep talk from Stan the Salesman, but he can also be seen walking over him when Miles is having a decidedly grounded moment, and again on a train as Miles thwips by. Lee additionally voices J. Jonah Jameson in that hysterical post credit scene. Considering Stan Lee passed away just a month before this film's release, getting to see the Spider-Man co-creator for even just a fleeting few moments was a welcome sight. Number 3. Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse – Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Mickey Mouse has a history of finding his way into Disney movies, be it in the form of his silhouette in the background or sneaking his way into a song. But appearing alongside Looney Tunes legend Bugs Bunny? That's an iconic moment. The tunes are parachuting together in Toontown when private detective Eddie Valiant drops in hoping they have a spare. Here's the spare. Thank you. <laughs> ah, no! Ah! Mickey is more friendly, while Bugs is a bit of a stinker. Not the most expected meetup, to be sure, but having these two animated idols together on screen is representative of the major components of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Tunes from different animation studios coming together to entertain and make us smile. Aw, poor fella. <laughs> yeah, ain't I a stinker? Number 2. Various historical and pop culture figures – The Lego Movie Franchise Good morning, city! The whole Lego universe was handmade by elite builders dubbed Master Builders. The Master Builders consist of some of the greatest artists, heroes, pop cultural and historical icons of all time in minifigure form. These include, but are not limited to, Batman, the Justice League, William Shakespeare, Abe Lincoln, the Statue of Liberty, Shaquille O'Neal, voiced by himself. It's game time. Y'all ready for this? Oh no, they were ready for that. Even the Star Wars clan gets into the act. Though they're some of the greatest figures in history, they all sadly struggle to recognize the true hero of the story, the admittedly ordinary Emmett. And that's just the first film. Batman's Lego Movie stepped things up a notch, and the Lego Movie sequel took things further with the likes of Scooby-Doo's Velma, Bruce Willis, a couple of professional basketball players, and even some friendly faces from the first movie. Yo, what's up, GL? I see you, boy. Hey, oh, here comes Lex with the smoothies. Who wants a mango berry blast? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Video Game and Disney Properties Galore – The Wreck-It Ralph Franchise Mushroom? No. What is that? No. Oh, come on, Zangief. Gross. 
2012's Wreck-It Ralph knocked it out of the park with exciting, entertaining storytelling and enough video game references to make a superfan's head spin. We were treated to the crossover to end all crossovers, at least we thought, in the Bad Anon support group sequence. You want Clyde the Pac-Man Ghost? Sonic the Hedgehog's Dr. Robotnik? Super Mario Bros. Bowser? Street Fighter's Zangief and M. Bison? Yep, all there. Now let's close out with the bad guy affirmation. But then the 2018 sequel happened, and reminded everyone that Disney owns everything we love. At the Oh My Disney Pavilion on the internet, you can spot Iron Man, Buzz Lightyear, Kermit, R2-D2, and even super niche characters like Humphrey the Bear and the Ranger. That's not even counting those epic Disney princess scenes. Oh, right, and a Stan Lee cameo. Seriously, watch this movie at half speed. Sorry, mister! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.